Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And good morning. But today I am delighted and honored to have this opportunity to be part of this opening ceremony and to welcome all the participants from all over the world for the second international postgraduate conference in mechanical engineering or RPSME 21. Thank you also to our keynote speaker. Uh, Datin Prof. Dr. Nimi Satina, Menteri Abdul Munaim, Dean of Institute of Postgraduate Study, UMP, NRR ES Wan Muhammad Ikhwan, Dean Wan Yusuf from Petronas, that willing to allocate their precious time to share their knowledge and experience with us today. This conference will serve as a platform for uh, academicians and postgraduate students together and share their ideas and result of research virtually. Although this conference is organized through online meeting because of COVID-19, I hope that all participants could share their re recent results of their research and learn from each other. And finally, it will give benefit to all of you. This year, at PSME 2021, with the theme of fostering Modern Frontier in Mechanical Engineering aims to provide a platform for discussion and dissemination of ideas and expertise among researchers in mechanical engineering. It is hoped that the intellectual discourse will result in the future collaboration between universities, research institutions and industry both locally and internationally. As Dean of Faculty of Mechanical and Automotive Engineering Technology, I would like to express my Appreciation to Perbaranan Usawa National Berhad UMD for their generosity and support that has made this conference possible. And also my appreciation extends to all the organizing committees for their dedication, time and effort. Their effort has made the conference to happen according to our plan. I hope that this conference will accomplish all its aim and hoping that all participants will gain benefit from presentation and discussion. Thank you all of your present and participation. Thank you and enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Mahade, for that wonderful remarks. Now, we proceed with keynote speech sessions, and I would like to invite Dr. Noor Arziani in Ghazali as a moderator to introduce the guest speaker. Please welcome Dr. Noor Arziani. Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everyone. I was uh, given the honor to introduce our guest speaker. The topic for this session is on the role of higher education in the fifth industrial revolution. Industrial revolution have been progressing since 18th century, where the first mechanical system to generate the steam in more productive manner was introduced. Now, we are already in the phase known as the fifth industrial revolution. A bit of, about our guest speaker, she obtained her PhD from University of Technology Malaysia 2008 and has been shown her passion in research and education area. She started as a lecturer in University of Malaysia Pahang and climbed her way up through hard work. Her hard work was paid off as she was named as the first female researcher from the university to be awarded with Best Woman Inventor by World Intellectual Property Organizations. Her expertise includes engineering technology, specialty chemical and enzyme technology. As the current Dean of Institute of Postgraduate Studies, she is determined to be prepared student for the coming fifth industrial revolution. I am sure that she is very eager to share her experience and knowledge related to today's topics. So without any further ado, let's welcome Professor Datin T.S. Dr. Mini Sakina Abdul Munaim to give her speech. Please welcome.
Thank you very much. Okay, uh, welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Uh, welcome to second international postgraduate conference on mechanical engineering, IPCME 2021. And today we'll talk about the role of higher education in fifth industrial revolution. Um, can you see my slide? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, first of all, let me discuss about the meaning of industrial revolution. Okay. The Oxford Dictionary of Phrase and Fable said that the rapid development in industry that occurred in Britain in the late 18th and 19th century brought about by the introduction of machinery. It means that rapid development of industry is very important in industrial revolution. And another uh, definition that has addressed by World Encyclopedia 2030 which see that social and economical transformation of agricultural societies into industrial societies. And it also began in Britain in the 18th century. So we must know that the industrial revol revolution is come from agricultural societies into industrial societies. And now we have known that we have five industrial revolution started from Industrial Revolution 1.0, which is uh, starting from 1784 and focuses on mechanization. And this industrial produced based on machines powered by water and steam. And then we go to the next revolution, Industrial Revolution 2.0, which is starting on 1870 and is focused on electrification. And this mass production has been using assembly lines which focus on electrical energy. And the third revolution, industrial revolution, starting from the 1969, which focuses on automation and this automation using assembly lines, which is collaborated by using the electronic and IT systems. And the next revolution for the industrial revolution IR 4.0, which has been started for, starting from the 2011, and it is focuses on digitalization and introducing of connected devices, data analytics, and artificial intelligence technologies to automated processes further. And this technology focuses on IoT, which is Internet of Things, Big Data, and also the cloud computing. The last industrial revolution, which is the newest one, IR 5.0, which has been started from 2019, focuses on personalization. And this is the cooperation between man and the machine as human intelligence works in harmony with cognitive computing resulting in human or user-centered product and services. So today we will focus on IR 5.0. Okay, what is IR 4.0 and uh, the differences between IR 4.0 and 5.0? As we all know that, so the AI is artificial intelligence, top five in the world is based on the automated customer service agent sales process recommendation and automation, automated treat and intelligent and prevention, IT automation, and fraud analysis and investigation. So this is in 2020. So uh, what are the advantages of IR 4.0 that is very important to us to know as 
the postgraduate students. So the first thing is the IR 4.0 is customization. So in the customization, this process is the customer orientation. It's very fast and efficient. That is uh, very good in customer needs and there are no caps between manufacturer and the customer. So it's very efficient and very good thought for these advantages of the IR 4.0. And another point is the smart factory. This is under optimization. So the smart factory, the cost efficient, and it is also increased the productivity because in, we must know that IR 4.0 link or collaboration together all the data into the machine. And the last one, the advantages that I can conclude here is the aggressive of research that has been done during nowadays, it most about the IT security, education and industry, and also the education and training itself. So it is very, very important in the research about this IR 4.0. However, we can see that there are challenges in IR 4.0. That's why we will go to the IR, IR 4, 5.0. Okay? The first challenges in IR 4.0 is about the capital. So in the capital itself, the, the technology or the industry that is focused on the massive investment, they need money to invest in AI, the artificial intelligence, the IoT, the Internet of Things, or robotics. <coughs> Only the big company can invest a lot in this IR 4.0. However, for the SME, it will affect it and it was, will be decreased in terms of their production. So the next one is about the security. The security for this IR challenges for IR 4.0 is about the online integration itself. So this online integration is uh, will be lead into the data leaks and security breach. So this thing will happen if we have give a lot of detail to the cloud, and this online integration will be we will see that they have been uh, threat in cyber threat and also the initial reputation of the company if the data has been exposed to the uh, other people or other company. And the last one is about the privacy itself. So if you put all the data inside the cloud, put all the data into one, one uh, system, so the data for privacy for the manufacturer and also the customer will be not secure. So this thing, we, we as a customer, we as a higher education uh, team must be think about this uh, three things of challenges in IR 4.0. Okay, let's we see why we need to transform to IR 5.0. So the Ministry of Japan's, uh, the Prime Ministry of Japan's Abe Shinzo during the World Economic Forum say that um, in society 5.0, why he, he, he focuses on 5.0? Because it is no longer capital, but data that connect and derive and drive everything. So there are some uh, drawbacks from the IR 4.0, which we only focus on robotic, focus on machine, but not from human. So the society 5.0, this, that come from J Japan said that we need to transform it into men and also the machine itself. <clears throat> so, so now we can see that we have uh, a lot of uh, smartphone and also smartwatch, which we can see this IR 4.0 is integrated with each other. Okay? We can see there are cloud over there and you see all the data we put in one smartphone or smart watch. So this smartphone, if this uh, data will link together, either for the customer or the manufacturer, will think, we know about this data. 
It's all data, for example, for your health, for your, what you eat, and what you do. Uh, every day, you, you put it into the smartphone or smartwatch. However, in IR 4.0 can be transformed into IR 5.0 in terms of if you have health, health uh, problem or if uh, something that can detect the individual heart rate or breathing abilities that could identify individual is suffering and cardiac arrest so it can immediately link to the hospital and from this hospital they will arrange the ambulance that this ambulance is without the driver and come to you take you to the hospital to give um, urgent or in immediate uh, uh, immediate uh, clinical uh, for hospitalization okay so this we call it ir 5.0 which we link together the human and also the project or the uh, the technology itself so even this one is without driver it is immediately can take you from home to the hospital without any doubts okay so measure is measure ready to go to the IR 5.0. Yes, of course, today we have the pandemic. This pandemic, COVID-19, is very, uh, very problem, the, the very high risk and very uh, crucial to us. So toward this one, Malaysia go to Malaysia 5.0, which focus on healthcare transformation. And also, at Malaysia 5.0, focus on digital transformation for business. So you can see uh, in the STAR and NST talk about Malaysia 5.0, which actually related to the Society 5.0 that has been announced by Prime Minister of um, Japan. Okay, what are the MOHE action plan? MOHE is nation, higher, nation of higher education. So this action plan is for the IR 4.0 that has been, re, this has been uh, put it in, in the words, put it in the maps that they need to redesign the higher education since 2017. There are a lot of plan that nation give to the um, high, in the higher education to, to the students in, uh, in, the, in the university or in the institution in terms of readiness for IR 4.0 and towards IR 5.0. Okay, we can see over here is about the transformation from I, my, my is Malaysian Higher Education 1.0 to Malaysian Higher Education 4.0. As we can see here, Nation High Education 1.0, you can see only the teacher's center. Okay, so the teacher's center to the student. Student only receive whatever teachers give. So this is the 1.0 for Nation Higher Education. And then it changed or it transformed into Nation Higher Education 2.0. So in Nation Higher Education 2.0, that learners, there are no more teachers, but learners as acceptable for knowledge. It means that there are two ways communication between the teachers and also the students. So in this, uh, my Malaysia Higher Education 2.0 is quite good because the student can give their, uh, their response and give their opinion about something. Okay. Then when the Malaysian higher education changed to 3.0, so Malaysian education 3.0, we can see that we go to the problem-based learning and we go to the global expertise, uh, all, the, all the whole world, and also we do just some collaboration 
in terms of uh, MOA, MOU, and NDA. So this Malaysian Higher Education Tribunal Bureau, or my HE, is related to teachers as facilitator. So this is very much more good compared to my H, uh, HE point zero in terms of their social networking throughout the world by using the Facebook, the WhatsApp, the Skype, and etc. And this is between the teachers and also the students. So in this problem based learning or uh, industrial based learning, collaborative and interactive web tools such as we use the Wikipedia, Logs, Google Docs, or Imodo. Or in UMP, we use Calum or IMS. And the last formulation, higher education 4.0. So in this transformation from, from 3.0 to 4.0, formulation education, so we can see that there are no more teachers. The educators as resource guide. And now the learners as a teacher. So what happened over here? Learners as connectors, creators, and constructivists. So this one we have open access, open access to information, and we also have access to expert learners as contents producer or sharer. And you can see the web as a curriculum, diversity of network inside this My Malaysia Higher Education 4.0. Okay. The transformation from 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0, we can see there are a lot of networking over here. And we can see how the human and technology was connected. Okay, now we go to the, uh, th this one is some article about humanizing higher education. So Malaysia go to the uh, Malaysian Higher Education 4.0, which the, the framing of this one uh, comprises of humanizing. So we can see that it is towards IR 5.0 actually. So it is not focuses on mission, it is not focuses on technology, but it's actually, we develop the people, we develop um, a leaders, we develop managers in the higher education in order to collaborate with the mission itself. So this one has, um, has already produced or already announced in August 2020. And we can see there are a lot of uh, planning that has been done by the mission, by the MOHES in order towards IR 4.0. And we can see this action plan from the MOHE. So there are four strategies in humanizing higher education for future, which are proof talents. We can see the first one, the action plan is about the future ready curriculum and the government itself the R&D, research and innovation, and the talent planning. So these four strategies has been uh, strategized or has been uh, put it in, in, into the uh, action plan for MOHE uh, 2017. Okay. So UMP, what is UMP towards IR 5.0? You can see here, so before this, we have all these things. We have Kalam, we have IMS, we need to discuss with the supervisor, we need to put it, uh, the marks over there, we put it, the progress over there, we have uh, put it attendance over there, in registration, etc. But how we want to link it into the IR 5.0, well, that we really need to, really to, to do some uh, work after we graduate from UM. So in this part, we are focuses, the next step is we focus focuses on e-portfolio. 
So ePortfolio will give all the data from the students that have been progressed in their study. So, um, so that uh, the, uh, from the, it is not from the lecturer to give the marks or to give the uh, uh, the commission with the student, and also uh, it is go to the industries, companies, and other institution that can be uh, command to the student progress as well as for the PQI or continuous quality assurance for the curriculum of the um, program itself. So student needs to go to short course or they go to the uh, presentation or curriculum in the uh, in the university and then the industry or company or institution or other institution uh, from uh, from all over the world can uh, comment and can see what will happen or what are the progress students in UMP. So that we go to directly 5.0 because of what? Because from their comment, it's very important to us to uh, strengthen our curriculum uh, to tell our students that customer needs or that in other institutions mm -hmm. or other industries. So that's uh, are the planning for UMP 2025 20, that is focuses on e-portfolio students and we give it the short course and also the lifelong learning for the student itself. Okay, so current situation now, what are the situation now? You can see that. Uh, between 2011 and 2015, it is about the reason why it is difficulty in filling jobs as a global, yeah, as a global. So we can see that there are lacking of technical competency, which is the hard skill itself. And also we can see there are lack of workplace competency, which is soft skill. So these two is these two skills is very important for the students or the graduate from the university or higher education to fill in okay, before they go or seek for the jobs. Okay? So this is global issue. And we can see over here, okay, this is about uh, what we call it the Malaysian graduate of employment status. This is focuses only for Malaysian citizen. You can see a comparison between 2018 and 2019. So in Malaysia, 2000 in 2019, we can see about 17,000 graduate masters. Okay? Compared to 2019, it was 7, uh, 17,200. So there are increment of graduates. However, the unemployed uh, masters, uh, graduate masters is decreased okay, from 2000 to 1,700. It, will it, it decreased about 3%, okay, about 13.5% to 10.2%. Uh, 10 it is mostly 3% decrease the unemployed uh, master's graduate. However, we can see here, for the PhD graduate. So in 2018, it is about 2,600 graduates, okay, graduates in uh, all over the nation, and 2,700 uh, student uh, graduates from 2019. So we can see the increment also in graduates for PhD okay, between 2018 and 2019. But the unemployed also decrease. Uh, these are the statistics from OHE, um, uh, the GE data for 2019 and 2020. So the decrement of unemployed is about 6%, okay? from 18.1% to 12%. So we can see that there are decrement of employed. However, is the unemployed student or unemployed graduates, is it fit to the company or is it fit to the industry? Uh, that's why 
they, they will not unemployed by that, that agency. So what we must do for these unemployed students or unemployed graduates? So now we try our best to make sure that these unemployed students or uh, graduates to go for the entrepreneurship. So for this entrepreneurship, they will, they will open their business by their own self. So they will uh, produce your customer oriented and also they can produce their own salary. Okay, now we ask ourselves, are we ready for this uh, towards IR 5.0? You can see here, as you can see, there are change in demand as well as the co-work related skills in 2015 to 2020. So what are the skills that industry need? So are we ready for that? So there are nine skills. So the cognitive abilities, system skills, and, and etc. You can see that uh, there are increment, uh, especially in cognitive. What is cognitive itself? You must know what is that. And the system and problem solving. Yes, for masters and, and PhD students, they need to solve the problems. Problem. So the urgency of the problem, what are the complex problems they need to, to solve it. So these are the skills that industry needs. Because of what? Because towards IR 5.0, or now we go to the 4.0, so there are a lot of problems in the industry that deals with the technologies and how we want to solve it uh, and collaborate it between humans and also the the, the machine itself. So we can um, put it in, for example, this one. Okay, we can see what are um, the uh, the detail of this cognitive analytics. Okay, the details of cognitive analytics is com is comprised of cognitive flexibility, creativity, logical reasoning, problem sensitivity, mathematical reasoning and visualization. So this is more to the knowledge that students or graduate must know. So if they don't have any skill for this one, it's quite difficult to uh, seek the job to, uh, to the industry or other companies. And also we can see that the, the white one is cognitive and also the physical abilities. This is the abilities or the Light blue one, this is the basic skill that students or graduate must have. This for the physical abilities, they must know about, must have the physical strength and manual um, acquisition and dexterity for this graduate, as well as content skills and process skills. They must know of, or they must have the active learning, oral expression reading, compression, writing, and ICT literacy. Also the process skill, they must know about the active listening, critical thinking, monitoring self, and others. So these skills are required uh, for the graduates of uh, higher education. And we, have, we can see the uh, job one, okay, the dark blue, which comprises of so social skills, resource management skills, technical skills, complex problem skills, and system skills. These four skills are the cross-functional skills, uh, which this one is uh, linked to each other. And for example, for the social skill, this coordinating each other. You see, gift is emotional intelligence, negotiation, persuasion, service orientation, training, and teaching each other each other. So this one is more to monitor, is, is a, a, as a leader, if they will go for the management, management uh, team. Okay. And for the resource management skills also, they need the man, managing the financial resources and material resources. They can manage people and also time. And for the technical skills, students or graduate can equipment, uh, maintenance, repair, operation, and control. This is more to the hard skill, the technical skills. They can also do some programming 
and control quality control of the product. Also troubleshooting, and lastly, the technology uses experience design. So these are the skills that are um, needed by the industry. The, the another two skills is system skills and complex problems solving skills. That is uh, more to the uh, judgment of the decision making and also how you uh, you, you do the problem solving skills in terms of uh, the, about the machine about the the people that you arrange and you manage itself. Okay, <clears throat> so. What UMP can offer, okay, what, or what the higher education? So in terms in this conference, I focus on the UMP itself. So in terms of, we need to skills, uh, what skills that we require as PG students in UMP. So we try our best to map uh, all the skills that industry needs or in other institution needs or company needs to the whatever evaluation that we have done in UMP. For example, in the first one, it is a planning your research. Okay, as a postgraduate student, you the first semester you need to plan yourself. You, you need to plan your research, and this planning is very important in order to uh, graduate on time. So we call it the management skills. For example, if you go to the company, if you go to the industry, you you have some project and how you manage that project. So this is very, very important. So in this part, the green part, we put it under research plan and progress report. It is collaborate each other or it is linked each other because it shows that student can manage itself. Student can manage their time, student can manage their project. So this is the first skill that student must have. The second one is, the blue one is, uh, we, we want the student to increase their knowledge. So increase their knowledge in terms of cognitive skill. So in this part, we try our, our best to give a student or to, uh, uh, to uh, offer the student about the courses. So we have the compulsory courses, which is the basic one. The basic how the student want to, to write a research or do the research and we, we have another courses that is the elective one we call it the competency courses in terms of these competency courses we have 16 courses in this um, uh, in this uh, model or in these courses that give a student benefit in terms of cognitive that industrial needs and the yellow one is we want to improve the postgraduate students in terms of soft skill. So this in terms of soft skill is uh, is about the communication skills, which comprises of the writing skills and the presentation skills. So in this part, the evaluation that we shows the student capable or competent about these skills the student will publish the paper. So we calculate the publication in terms of colloquium. We will go to the open colloquium for all the students and we go to the proposal defense that we can see that how the student present their proposal and how they defense their, their, their project itself. We go to the pre-viable pre -viable C and also the viable C. So these are the evaluation that we uh, try our best to uh, to give a student know what are the level of their progress or their skills in the university. And the gray one, which is the last one, is manage your resource, which come from the resource management skills. And this is, for example, if the student got a scholarship or postgraduate research scheme. So in this PGRS, for example, the student will, um, will give about 3,000 or 4,000 uh, ringgit. So this money, the student will, will buy their chemicals or we go to the conferences or will send their papers for publication and etc. So how the student manage that is the grant 
a little bit grant for the students and how do you manage is very, very important. So these are the skills that we try uh, to give to the students. And um, as, as we can put it into the e-portfolio students, uh, as uh, this one is the evaluation by itself. And then if, when we put it in the, in the e-portfolio, and uh, the industry or the company will comment then they will uh, put it, what are the improvements that need for this postgraduate students or this curriculum okay, inside uh, UMP itself. So, for example, we towards this colloquium, open colloquium. So this open colloquium means that other students or other, other faculties can come into the colloquium and give some comment to the students. So students need to answer during the presentation. So this is actually sharing knowledge, but actually also give uh, some uh, benefit to the student to increase or to improve their communication skills. Okay, we can see also the competency courses that I, I, I said before. These competency courses, as now we have um, mm, uh, offered students about 16 courses. These 16 courses comprises of engineering mathematics, statistic and data analysis, research methodology, English for thesis writing, and software for thesis writing. So these are the competency courses that we give to the student or we offer to the student um, to increase their cognitive abilities. So we have mental mentee over here uh, there are no, no many students in one class. It is about 10 to 15 students in one class. And uh, the facilitator or the lecturer focuses on the student itself. And uh, this is very, very important and very, very good. And we have a um, uh, good response from the student that has been uh, come to these courses. And uh, it's very, and we, we need to do some exercises again and again. So uh, that are uh, th this from these competency courses. Also, we will go towards lifelong learning. So these added value courses to the students, so that the industry or the company or stakeholders knows that they have some something that uh, difference from others. Uh, they have some uh, added uh, courses. For example, in terms of statistics and data analysis that the, the, the industry needs uh, in the future. Okay, um, that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, is there any question? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. MPS Dr. Mini Sakina, for your outstanding presentations and knowledge sharing. Now I will open for Q&A sessions. And also, you may leave your question in the text box. So, uh, Prof, there is uh, one question here. What is the effect for IR 4.0 on COVID-19? Effect, effect 4.0 or COVID-19? Yeah. COVID-19. So actually, uh, thanks God, because this COVID-19 makes IR 4.0 uh, more efficient because um, uh, the people or uh, we ourselves are quarantined in the house and we can't go anywhere. So now we need the internet. We need the data. So from this internet, this is data is actually we go towards IR 4.0 totally. And when we, um, we get this um, technology, and this technology help the men or uh, help uh, people, so this collaboration is very good towards IR 5.0. So uh, in my opinion in, uh, for this question is, uh, this actually the pandemic COVID-19 is uh, give a positive uh, ways for IR 4.0 towards 100% or totally, and uh, it's very good to uh, 
go to the IR 5.0 itself. Thank you, Prof. There's any question from the floor? Uh, Prof, uh, I have one question. Uh, as for postgraduate studies, do you think uh, your NP students ready for IR 5.0? Okay, so um, thank you for the question. So that's why that I mentioned before about the uh, the skills actually that uh, industry or companies or other institution needs uh, mostly about the cognitive skills and technical skills, how we manage uh, management skills, uh, problem solving skills, that actually we try to put it in the curriculum or put it into the program that a student will be evaluated during their master's or PhD in UMP. So actually this, this we go towards IR 4.0 and uh, 5.0 itself. So if student can uh, solve their problem uh, during um, uh, their research itself, they can manage itself. And uh, for example, we try to solve the industrial problem uh, based on, uh, we have the focus group uh, and the center of excellence and etc. So this is towards IR 4.0 and 5.0. Thank you, Prof. So we have uh, another question here. Uh, Prof, how we can promote more involvement from industry to work together with academic researchers to achieve our IR 4.0 and 5.0? Okay, um, towards uh, collaboration with the industry, first we can use uh, the NDA, uh, Non-Disclosure Agreement, or MOU, which, uh, which are the activities that we can start, start the kickstart first. And uh, this MOU and MOA or NDA, we can uh, put it in uh, a little bit uh, grant or activities that can uh, solve a little, uh, for example, uh, some of the industrial problem. And uh, this is about the research itself. However, if we want to do some creation in terms of we need the ideas from the industry. So that's why we come on, uh, uh, the, the UMP come uh, for uh, e-portfolio, which this e-portfolio uh, give all the, uh, the uh, give the, the uh, industry what to progress students in UMP and we want to know the comment from the industry for example we record the colloquium or we record this uh, uh, for example this conference and then we give it to the industry and industry comment about the how the student present what are the problem statement that they uh, address and how they solve uh, the problem itself. So we need the comment from the industry. So the first, th this one are uh, uh, other things that we can we can do. So um, industry can give some comment, and from this comment, industry will believe that our student can uh, solve uh, the industrial problem, for example, or can uh, have many ideas or novelty ideas uh, to solve the problem. So uh, I think this one is, uh, we, we can start as soon as possible uh, to get the cooperation with the in industry. Thank you, Prof. So for the last question, uh, is there any involvement in IR 4.0 and 5.0 in the vaccination process? Yes, of course. So this IR 4.0 and 5.0 uh, for the vaccination, uh, especially in terms of um, COVID-19 itself, the, this pandemic. So um, the technology is very fast. And now uh, they need the vaccine. Okay. Some of the studies say that this vaccine, uh, they actually have